So you have finished designing a beautiful and high performing website for your client in Framer. But now you have faced with a big next step, handing it off. Now let me ask you this. Do you want your client handoff to be smooth, stress-free and potentially lead more projects? If that sounds good to you, then stick around. Because in this video, I will walk you through a step-by-step -step guide to handing off a framer website to a client in a way that not only satisfies the client but leaves them impressed and confident to manage their site on their own. I'm going to cover everything you need to know from finalizing the site getting all the important client approval, creating some simple but valuable documentation, and finally handing over the sign to the client. And I will show you why each of the steps can make all the difference in client's experience. These steps aren't just completing a project. They are about creating an experience for your client. It's a chance to leave your client a great impression and increases the chances they will come back to you for the future work. All right, let's dive into the video. The first step is all about making sure the site is ready to go before the client even takes a look at it. That is frame site finalization. First things first, remove all your filler content from your project. Replace placeholder text. Swap out the stock image with the final ones and make sure everything on the site represents the brand and message your client wants. This might seem small, but the client notice that you have taken a time to review every details. Replace placeholders and delete unnecessary pages. It is common to have some extra pages, mockups, or experimental design elements that you have used during the design phase. Now it's time to delete those. Think of it as a recluttering of the workspace for your client. Check functional elements. Double check the interactive elements like buttons, forms, and links. Just check whether all your CTA is working as they should. Is the navigation smooth and logical? This final review only takes a few minutes, but it ensures your client won't run into any issues on the launch day. The second step is seeking final client approval. Once you're confident that site is perfect, it's time to bring in your client for the final say. That is request client approval. First, let us know why final approval matters. You might be thinking, if the site is ready, why do I need the approval from the client? Here's why. The client's feedbacks, even at the final stage, is crucial. They may spot something you overlooked or ask for tweaks that might save you from making a revision later on. This step ensures that you are both fully aligned. How to ask for feedback effectively? When you reach out, keep it simple and specific. We can say something like, the site is ready for you to review. Please look at everything, especially the main pages and interactive elements. And let me know if there is anything you would like to suggest before we go live. Something like this you can say to your client. This makes sure that they know what to focus and gives them a clear invitation to speak up. The third step is creating client documentation. Now that you have got the final thumbs up from your client, the next step is creating a bit of documentation. This can be a game changer. Now let's talk about why it is important. Why documentation is essential. Creating a short guide for your client may seem like some extra work, but trust me, it's worth it. This is what I call the wow factor because clients don't usually expect this level of detail. By providing the documentation, you are not only adding the value, but also helping them to avoid some small frustration. It's like handing over the key for the car, but also showing them how to drive. What to include in documentation? Your documentation doesn't need to be lengthy. Aim for 20 to 30 minutes walkthrough. Here's what you can typically cover. How to edit text and CTAs how to replace images, basic SEO tips like adjusting title tags and meta descriptions, how to make minor customization to keep the site fresh, highlight CMS that is content management system in the documentation. Try to spend good chunk of time on explaining the CMS. This is often where the client will be adding and editing the content most often. So try to show them how to manage the collection update blogs and make changes to dynamic content. By explaining the CMS structure, you empower them to keep the site up to date 
without needing constant support from you. These documentation not only surprise your clients but also reduces the bunch of follow-up questions or minor edits that may need from your post-launch. It's a time investment upfront but it saves your time and their time later on. The fourth step is steps to hand off a site to the client using Framer. Now let's get into the actual process of handing off the site using Framer. This is where your client officially takes over. But there are few key steps to make sure everything goes smoothly. Guide the client in creating the Framer account. Before you send over the project, ask your client to create the Framer account. They can do this when they receive the Remix link. But I find it's easier if they already have created their account. It's a simple sign up process and it helps keep everything organized for them. Once their account is ready, it's time to share the Remix link. In Framer, go to the top left menu, select File and choose Copy Remix link. This link allows your client to duplicate the project and start using it right away. Next, try to use the affiliate tag for Framer Partners. If you are an official Framer Partner, don't forget to add the affiliate tag to the Remix link. This is helpful for tracking purposes and ensures that your work is recognized within the Framer network. Here's how the affiliate tag might look like. Now, request editor access. There is for offer additional support as an editor. Ask your clients to add you as an editor in their Framer workspace, at least at the initial setup. This can be helpful if they need any assistance for connecting the custom domain or if you want to make sure there are no final adjustments needed before they launch. And also don't forget to inform them of additional cost. Make sure to mention that adding you as an editor may incur an extra charge depending on their workspace plan. But for clients who appreciate for the added support, this is often worth the small additional fee. By following this step which I have mentioned so far, you are not just handing over a website. You are giving your client an exceptional experience that will stand out. A smooth handoff leaves a lasting impression and it's a great way to set yourself as a professional. Your clients will feel confident in managing their site and they are more likely to reach out to you for their future projects. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more tips on web design and framework. Also drop a comment if you have any further question or if there is anything specific that you would like me to cover in the future videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.